What's going on everyone? So in this video, I'm going to attempt to make a visual demonstration of how sway affects towing, how it affects a travel trailer, and the things you can do as well as how the hitches work to help counter it. So hopefully it's educational and you get something out of it. So first of all, I made these little uh, cardboard cutouts. One of them is a visual of a trailer, and the other one is a visual of a truck. Now I have three of these cutouts. This specific one represents a six foot bed. This one represents an eight foot bed. And this one represents an eight foot bed with dual rear wheels. Now what I wanna show you is why sway happens. So a lot of people are trying to find out what the very best sway control hitch would be for them and why they even need it. What forces are at play on their travel trailer while they're driving down the road that cause sway in the first place. And that's really what you have to understand. So I'm gonna to try to make this as simple as possible because I know there's a lot of folks out there who just want information provided to them in a way that's easy to digest. And hopefully I can do that here in this video. So, a few things to consider. Why is sway more pronounced on something like a travel trailer versus a boat or a gooseneck trailer or a flat utility trailer? And the real answer to that is wind. The fact is, a travel trailer carries a much higher profile to it, generally anywhere between 8 and 13 feet tall. And because they're so much taller, the forces at play when wind is hitting the side of it make it react like a wall or a kite. Very similar if you're ever throwing away a big cardboard box and it's windy outside, how the wind wants to grab it. So that is one of the things that affects and causes sway. Now, another thing that a lot of people don't realize that can cause sway are the tires. If the tires on your trailer aren't aligned properly and they're not pointing perfectly straight, that's gonna induce sway because, let's say your tires are curved out slightly and the trailer wants to start wandering off because the tires aren't pointed perfectly straight, what's gonna happen is, is the truck's gonna wanna counteract that by pulling it back. And in turn, it's gonna create an imbalance in the front of the trailer, which will cause the trailer to start moving side to side. I'm sure many of you have seen that if you've seen people pulling utility trailers with cars down the road, where it looks like the trailer's all over the place. And much of that has to do with the fact that the alignment of the tires on the trailer are causing the front of the trailer to move back and forth because as the trailer wants to go a different direction than the vehicle, the vehicle's constantly pulling it straight. So it's wanting to go this way, the vehicle pulls it straight and it starts swerving from side to side like this. So wind isn't the only thing that can cause sway, even though it is a main contributor to it. Definitely out of alignment tires can be a huge contributor to sway as well. Also, something that can enhance sway, not necessarily cause it, but more enhance it, is improper weight distribution on the towing vehicle. So if all the weight of your trailer, let's say it's a thousand pounds, is right here, and it's lifting the front of the vehicle off of the ground, basically what's happening is you're reducing the weight on the front tires and it's causing the back end to be improperly balanced. So you're putting weight on the back end and it makes the front much looser, or essentially it doesn't put as much traction on the ground up front. So if your trailer is out of alignment or if it's windy, that weight on the back is gonna want the back to squat and lift the weight off the front, causing the front of the truck to feel very loose and unstable. So that's one of the reasons why it's so important to have a good weight distribution system. Basically, you just want the vehicle to ride level and you don't wanna to pull too much weight off of the front or pull too much weight off of the back if your hitch is improperly set up. Now the easiest way to explain how a travel trailer will affect a tow vehicle is to understand where sway occurs. Sway occurs between the back portion of the pickup truck and the front portion of the trailer in this section right here. The main reason it's occurring is because this connection point right here at your hitch is essentially a hinge. And the forces at play from wind, improperly aligned tires, all sorts of different things, crosswind gusts from vehicles going by, are wanting to make that hinge work. It's basically wanting to create a situation where the trailer and the truck are hinging together, just like a door hinge. When you have wind hitting the side of your trailer, this big wall, what's happening is, is it's wanting the trailer to move. The wind is controlling the trailer and your vehicle is constantly pulling it back to center. 
Well, the problem with weight is that it overcorrects that. So naturally, when wind starts to push your trailer out like this, it's gonna to wanna to take your truck with it. And when your truck pulls it back straight, the inertia of the trailer moving is gonna want it to continue to move past its center point. And then wind hits it again and it continues to do this motion. And that's where you get sway at that connection point. Most weight distribution systems on the market with sway control attempt to counter that with friction. There are aftermarket add-ons for weight distribution hitches as well as weight distribution hitches with integrated sway control. And basically all the hitch is doing is creating a pressure point that makes it very difficult for this hinge to operate. It's essentially acting almost like two straight bars that are trying to connect the back of the truck to the front of the trailer so it's incapable of doing this motion or it's much more difficult. Some of the more effective systems out there apply a tremendous amount of pressure downwards on pads or L brackets on the trailer to really keep it from moving side to side in this one area. Some of the more complex systems like the Hensley hitch actually eliminate the hinge. There's no more hinge there and it creates a system that doesn't rely on a typical single point turning mechanism. So basically you are eliminating that hinge effect. Now the next question people will ask is that they've heard that having a longer wheelbase vehicle can help eliminate sway. It doesn't necessarily eliminate sway, but it can help reduce it significantly. So let's change the truck around here real quick. So now we're looking at the truck with the eight foot bed compared to the truck with the six and a half foot bed. The reason why having a longer wheelbase truck inherently is going to change the dynamics of towing is because you're extending the overall space between the tires. And because of that, it takes more leverage for the trailer to actually impact the truck. And the truck has a better ability of straightening out the trailer just by natural motion. So a longer wheelbase vehicle is inherently gonna give you a little bit of sway control. Now it's not gonna defeat sway. So by getting an eight foot bed doesn't automatically mean you're not gonna have any sway that exists. All it does is it works more effectively to counter sway. It's still gonna adhere to the same laws of physics as a six and a half foot bed, but it will reduce some of the effect of sway marginally. Now let's talk about the difference between towing a fifth wheel versus a travel trailer and why there's such a big difference. We're gonna swap out this long wheelbase truck with a long wheelbase dually vehicle now. Okay, so now this is basically my representation of a dually long wheelbase truck hauling a fifth wheel. The hitch essentially has been moved to the center point of the truck itself. And a lot of people are gonna say, well, how does that counteract sway? Basically, why does a fifth wheel really not have sway when a travel trailer does. The reason why is, again, because of that hinge effect. Because the hinge is now been moved from the back of the truck, affecting the rear stability, to over the center point of the axles. So you can technically still have sway if the wind is strong enough, but the reason why there won't really be any is because you no longer have the ability to fold that hinge like you would with a travel trailer. The tires themselves are always gonna be the traction point holding the truck down, and because those tires are gripping the road, you are essentially creating a point to where if wind hits this, the center point where your kingpin would be is putting pressure directly against the side of the tires of the truck. So the truck itself just doesn't have the ability to move side to side as if you had the leverage focused on the back point of the bumper here causing the truck to sway. So a fifth wheel has almost no sway at all. You would rarely encounter a situation unless it is just incredibly windy where you would feel kind of that instability caused by that wind. Fifth wheels over a kingpin are definitely the safer as well as less stressful way of towing because again, it moves the pin weight over the rear axle as opposed to behind the rear bumper. You don't have to worry about weight distribution nearly as much either simply because you don't have that leverage point behind the tires that essentially want to remove weight from the front. But for the most part, it's simply going to affect rear payload and it's not going to have much of effect on the front of the truck. Using a system like this with airbags where you can level the vehicle back out is definitely the better setup. So again, it's very difficult to have sway in a vehicle like this. Now, I didn't explain this at first, but these thumbtacks essentially represent traction. It represents where tires make contact to the road and where there is essentially no force on the road. So naturally, anywhere underneath this middle point of the trailer where nothing is touching the ground, there is nothing to keep it stuck to the ground. 
Same with the truck. That's why if you notice the traction points are where the thumbtacks are. Right here on the front tires, right here over the rear tires, and of course on the trailer tires. The parts that are most affected by wind are going to be the parts that have nothing stuck to the ground, which will be this wall right here and this back area right here. So naturally anytime wind is hitting it from right here or up here or any direction where there's no traction on the ground, it's going to want to impact what the trailer is doing. A fifth wheel helps counteract that simply because your traction point, the point that's actually making contact with the ground and being pulled down by gravity, is right here. So when you have your trailer over it, it's making the entire unit almost one. And when you start to turn, because your pivot point is right here over the axle, it's not going to act the same way as a travel trailer would because you no longer have the leverage working against the back of the truck. So I've switched back to the travel trailer view and if you notice there's no traction here anymore. Underneath here you simply have the connection between the rear bumper of the truck or the hitch and the trailer. So the traction in turn that you're trying to use with a sway control hitch are those friction bars that connect the two together and keep the whole unit rigid right here. So it's relying on friction here to make the truck and the trailer essentially act as one unit. So again, when wind hits the side of the trailer, instead of it wanting to move and create this hinge right here, if you have bars here that are creating essentially a rigid connection, it doesn't want to allow the entire rig to move like that anymore. So inherently it creates sway control. So the best ways you can naturally control sway are either going to a very expensive hitch like a Hensley hitch, which essentially eliminates sway. It adds a lot of weight to the back of your truck and a lot of weight to the tongue of your trailer. So you have to make sure you have the payload capacity to support such a hitch. Towing with a fifth wheel will almost always eliminate sway as well as going with a very high quality weight distribution hitch, but more importantly, making sure that your weight distribution system along with sway control hitch is set up properly. If it's not set up properly, if the bars that are designed to create friction on those L brackets aren't resting perfectly flat against the surface of the L bracket, or if you don't have the right amount of force being applied to those bars to really prevent the two from pivoting here, you're not really doing anything. You're not having any effect on controlling sway. So the key to using a weight distribution system is ensuring that it's set up perfectly. And I really mean that. You don't have a lot of margin for error when you're setting up your sway control. You really need to make sure that you set it up as close to perfect as possible to get the most out of it. Even being off by a few degrees angle off of your L bracket can really cause the system to be pretty much ineffective. The whole point of the system is to create a rigid connection between the truck and the trailer. And of course, because when you turn, it's going to counteract that and the bar will slide because the amount of force your truck is putting against the weight of the trailer will naturally allow the truck to still make a turn. But that's one of the reasons why they're so loud when you are turning. A lot of times you hear that scraping noise and that's simply because the sway control system is trying to counter that turn. It's basically trying to do exactly what it does to counteract sway, but during a turn. I hope I made this pretty simple. I hope it's easy to understand and I hope it makes sense. If you have any other questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments field below. If you haven't had a chance, please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. Thank you everyone.